This spring so far, with its up and down weather, has thrown many aspects of crop production off kilter. That includes alfalfa stands, which, much as the case with wheat, took a hit from those three separate hard freezes in April. Insect activity in those fields was hampered likewise, but the alfalfa weevil has hung tough in these conditions, according to K-State crop entomologist Jeff Whitworth. We're out in an alfalfa field today because alfalfa is under attack with the alfalfa weevil, as it is every year. The alfalfa weevil, and that attacks alfalfa uh, primarily anywhere from late February um, till mid-May. And it is primarily responsible, or can be primarily responsible, for donating the first cutting um, to the alfalfa weevil if something is not done to manage it, control it, or protect those plants. Uh, the alfalfa weevil in the last two to three years has, the infestations have been really out of control uh, until some sort of management practice is put in, in play. Um, we've had last year in 2012, we had anywhere from 10 to 12 larvae per stem. Uh, and when you have infestations uh, at that level, it takes one to two days to completely eat the stem to the ground. In 2012, the infestation was so bad that if the growers or the consultants or the, or the uh, commercial applicators were three days late, they lost their crop. They donated that to the alfalfa weevil. I've never seen alfalfa weevil infestations at the level they were in 2012. So we were concerned about 2013. 2013 has been a completely different year weather-wise. And as most everybody knows, weather 100% controls the development of insects, and the alfalfa weevil is, is no, uh, no exception to that. 2012, we found the first weevils the 5th of March, 2013. It was the 26th of March, so you can see just due to the weather, we were three weeks behind. The alfalfa, correspondingly, has been about three weeks behind. 2012, the first week of April, most of the alfalfa in central Kansas, at least, had already been cut for the first time. Um, 2013, we're probably still two to three weeks away from that, and it's almost the first of May, so you can see we're approximately three weeks behind. Behind me, you see Miss Holly Davis. She's a PhD candidate and a research associate for the Department of Entomology. She's uh, now, with the sweep net, actually sampling alfalfa weevils. There's two different methods we use to sample alfalfa. First is the sweep net. We do this to determine if they are there. Once we determine they're there, then we use a second method, which is a, a bucket method. Holly is now doing sweep sampling. What you do is count the number of sweeps, bring that back, put the alfalfa in a bucket or a Ziploc bag so that you can count them at a later point in time and determine uh, how many are in the, uh, in the area that you've sampled with your sweep net. Uh, most fields have been treated one time at least. What we're worried about is are we going to need to treat again? because of the roller coaster weather situations we've had where it's been 60 to 70 degrees for two to three days. That allows weevils to develop. Uh, and then it goes down below freezing. Um, that stops their development as it does the plant. Because alfalfa is an early season crop, we have a, a problem deciding whether it is actually alfalfa weevil damage or damage caused by frost or freeze or the weather. Uh, so here we have really good examples of both. What you see here is the skeletonization of this leaf. That's caused by an alfalfa weevil larvae feeding on it. But down here, you see that it's yellow, uh, white, whatever color you want to call it. That's simply caused by the frost or the freeze. Uh, so a lot of times guys are driving by their field, consultants or growers, and they look out in the field and it has a silvery cast. That's very indicative of alfalfa weevils, but it can also be indicative of frost or freeze damage. This year it's both. You can see the, the feeding on this leaf, I hope, the little pinprick holes on the leaf, that's caused by the alfalfa weevil. You can also see the browning or the yellowing of the leaf, that's caused by the cold temperatures. So it's very important to get out after a cold spell, get out and determine whether it's actually um, the yellowing or the, the silvering is caused by alfalfa weevils 
or if it's caused by the weather. If it's caused by the weather, there's nothing you can do about it. If it's caused by alfalfa weevils, you need to get out and go through the sampling procedures to decide whether you needed to treat or not. So it's been real hectic uh, as a, an alfalfa producer or a consultant trying to decide whether we need to put out a second or a third, a third application of an insecticide to control the alfalfa weevils. Um, 48 degrees Fahrenheit is the cutoff for alfalfa weevil development. It doesn't kill them. That just means the alfalfa weevil doesn't develop, doesn't develop if it's below 48 degrees. Um, so you can see it's been kind of a struggle trying to predict their development. Right now, the last of um, April, we're finding a real dichotomy in the, in the larval situation in the alfalfa weevil. We find large larvae in fields that have been sprayed, and we find very tiny, small larvae that obviously have just hatched out. And I think what that means is the large larvae were someplace where it was protected, down in the leaf litter when the field was sprayed, or the frost or the freeze came along because they somehow perceive when, the, when uh, uh, adverse conditions are coming, they crawl down the plant and they get into some protected spot. So that protects them from the cold weather, but it also protects them from an insecticide application. Alfalfa weevils are, um, every year, they're a real struggle to try and manage. Um, they don't last that long. The, the season starts just as soon as the alfalfa breaks dormancy. That's when the alfalfa weevil breaks dormancy. Um, they start feeding voraciously. There's a lot of them and they can do a real number uh, on alfalfa if they're not treated. And so can the weather, because most insecticides don't work very well below 50 degrees. So alfalfa weevils, not only do you have to consider the insecticide and the efficacy of the insecticide, you also have to consider the weather. So you need to look ahead three to four days, see what the weather's gonna do. If you're gonna get some cold moisture events in the next three or four days, I probably would not spray, because the weevils won't be that active. The insecticide, all these insecticides are contact insecticides. The insecticides will not contact the weevils when they're not active. They'll be protected someplace. So you may, you may kill a few, but for the most part, uh, you're not gonna get good efficacy unless you have like a window of three or four days without a moisture event where the temperatures stay at least above 50 degrees during the day. 60 to 70 is even better. That gets the, the weevils active. That makes it sure, it helps ensure that the weevils are going to come in contact with the insecticide and that will give you your best uh, efficacy for that insecticide that you choose. Most of the insecticides that we test, and as you can see here in the background, we have a lot of flags. These are our uh, chemical efficacy um, tests, trials, uh, where we test uh, a lot of different products for the different companies. For the growers of the state, we publish uh, that information online on the entomology uh, website, the efficacy trials every year, uh, so that you can see how the, different, the, the various insecticides are performing in our trials. That's crop entomologist Jeff Whitworth of K-State Research and Extension. This is Ag AM in Kansas.